Leslie and Claire with Auslan. And um, you know, several customers have asked us to do this comparison between what's the difference between the Auslan Entourage and your basic double stroller. So here we are, we're gonna do the uh, differences between the two. Okay, so let's start this head-to-head -head comparison. So, um, you know, here we've got a, uh, a Upper Baby Vista. This is the one that we chose to do the comparison. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, every double stroller is basically like this now. They have this stadium seating style versus what we've done with the Entourage. So, um, a couple things to note. One is that your smaller child actually has to be furthest from you in this double configuration. This has to do with weight distribution, and so um, it's both because they don't want the stroller, I think, to tip over, and also because when you're trying to like, you know, mount this over a curb, um, that really bigger child that's heavier that's over these front swivels can make that very, very difficult to do. Um, so, difference between up a baby and the Auslan in that case is because um, of how we design this. Both of the seats are putting the majority of their weight into the center frame of the stroller, which means that when you push down and lift up, actually your children's weight is helping you <laughs> mount that curve, and so it's just much easier to do in an Auslan than it is um, in a typical stadium seating double. Um, okay, some other things, you know, most of these stadium seating seats are all modular, so it means each of these seats can fit in different directions. Now, although that sounds good in theory, it's not particularly practical. Um, you can see here, when both of these seats are facing forward, there is no room for that kid's legs to really be there, which you means- You can't recline at all. And you can't recline at all. So when they're both facing forward, either this child is going to kick the back of the seat constantly, or they may rest their feet up on top of the canopy, but it's just a very difficult um, configuration. So Similarly, if you move this and turn it around, first of all, your second seat then is inside of your storage basket, so they're kicking everything in your storage basket, and this kid is going to kick your sibling in the face. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's just not even a doable option. Um, so, you know, if you want them to both face forward, it's a very tight configuration. Facing each other, no way. No way. I mean, they would just... Maybe yeah, they could actually other. exactly they could actually, actually hurt, hurt, hurt the other kid. Sibling. So the two you know configurations that we found where they could actually sit in like a peaceful setting is okay if they're both facing toward you and keep in mind your bigger kid then is facing toward you and typically they don't want to do this they want to face forward and see out but if you do this then both of these seats can recline right. And, um, and of course then your younger kid is also facing, you know, he's just looking at the back of his seat. So like, not exactly happy. Um, or, you know, the best configuration, which is funny, is exactly what the entourage configuration is, <laughs> in a way, is, you know, let's have them face away from each other, right? When they face away from each other, in this case, you can recline both of the seats. And this is better too because this child's feet are not in the storage area. Yeah, I mean, I really think this is the best configuration. Mm -hmm. But again, the drawback of this configuration is number one, your biggest kid is facing you. And so they're constantly going to be craning to look around um, versus, uh, you know. Yeah, and you have to actually lift them up into the seat. Right, you have to get pretty them. big. What's the seat rated to um, weight wise? I feel like the, this seat is rated to 50, and then this uh, the smaller child seat is rated to 35 pounds. I can't imagine lifting up and down a 50, 50 pound kid. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You just feel we like- We all do get very strong. Yes, long arms, long arms, arms right? Yeah. But still tough. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the Auslan and how our seat configuration works. So, you know, what we wanted was instead of, you know, having to basically take your kid out of the seat in order to get them in a position where you could recline them, to sleep. In, in our case, you just expand the stroller. And when you do that, then, you know, you can do this on the fly. You can fully recline that front seat. This also, the second seat has a key position recline. And so you can recline both seats, still have access to your storage, and nobody's kicking anybody, right, when and everybody gets tired. Um, also, a big difference between us and these typical modular doubles is that our front seat is like a flat and so kids can, you know, take a nap.
that for a very long period of time and stay comfortable. And our customers tell us all the time, you know, their kids sleep for hours in our front seat because it is so comfortable. So um, those are the biggest differences in terms of the seat positioning and kind of what's doable. Um, okay, so the other, like I would say most notable difference between um, a typical sort of double modular and the Osman Entourage is what happens when your kids start to get older, right? So like we talked about, you know, this seat, 35 pounds, this seat, you know, 50 pounds, but eventually they get bigger and they get taller and they get wigglier. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the only solution that these double strollers have for this is that, you know, you can attach like a little rider board that kids can stand on when um, they get bigger. But when there's a rider board here, then you really can't walk behind the stroller because they are like in your space. And so what we see parents doing is they're like holding on to the side of their stroller while they, um, while they walk their kids alongside and they don't really have an, an ability to sit. So it's like they can either stand or, you know, that's kind of, that's the end of the story. Um, so this is where, you know, we designed our, the entourage to really last through many, many years of your family's growth and, you know, just be here for the long haul. So we've got, you know, this really nice, high quality jump seat. It snaps right onto the rear frame instead of the second seat. You know, it's super easy to, you know, deploy with one hand and then your little kids can hop on and hop off throughout the day. And anytime they're not using it, you can always make the stroller, you know, within a second into a single stroller. Um, so it just gives you this enormous amount of flexibility throughout your day. And, you know, it just means that your stroller is actually going to last you for a really long time. And you don't have to then buy a sim span stroller after you already made the investment in buying a double stroller. And I love, like Leslie pointed out, with the typical rider boards, this one is integrated onto the frame. It doesn't sit behind the frame, so it does not impede your stride at all. You don't have to walk next to the stroller. Yeah, it's so effortless. I mean, it really is. It's just, and honestly, for every kid we talk to, it's the favorite they thing. It. <laughs> yeah, they just love that seat. Um, it just solves the problem for you're going to have a long day out, and you know maybe you're going to go to Disney or a theme park or a zoo and, or a museum, and it's like you know your kid needs to rest some of the time. Some of the time they want to walk, and you know it just gives you that perfect level of flexibility. Yeah, it's perfect for kids who are almost nearing the end, or they think they're nearing the end of their stroller days. They're not comfortable sitting in a typical seat anymore, but you know they're going to get tired and they're going to want to sit down. <laughs> You'll notice here too that when Helene is on that jump seat, you can still fully recline the front seat. So they don't conflict with each other, which is very different from most sit and stands. Okay, the next thing we're going to walk through is the pole. So, you know, for the typical double uh, strollers, uh, you can't fold it with both seats attached. So you usually have to take off that second seat. And then, um, you know, I know we said this was kind of the best configuration for your kids being able to recline, but you cannot fold it in this configuration. So you still have to take the seat off and put it in the forward facing position and then kind of move it up before you can fold. Um, and then this has just a couple levers on the side that fold it. And um, there's a latch somewhere around here. Hmm. Did it already latch? Oh, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, it's folded. And then, um, you know, that's basically the fold. Um, I so like that it stands when it's folded, but I don't like that it's your arm bar, your handlebar, um, and it's actually on the ground. It is. <laughs> your handlebar is what keeps it standing, which is, you know, not great. Um, it's also, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's a little precarious as to where you pick it up, right? When it's folded, um, maybe from, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just a little precarious, like how you have to pick it up. Okay. So to fold the Oslin Entourage with the second seat, you can see Claire is just going to stow that seat and then she'll fold the front seat and then the rear frame just folds right on top of it. And you can see that second seat just tucks really nicely into the entire stroller. And, you know, we did design it where, you know, you can literally, it's like arm's width, right, to pick it up. 
And you can keep it really close to your body, which means that it's not as heavy uh, and not as much of a strain on your back. Um, but it does also stand when folded, similar to the upper. And then, you know, we did design it to wheel it into your trunk. So we'll show a video of that in a moment. And this one stands thanks to the fenders. So your handlebar remains clean. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to stand it on the um, fenders. Let's do a side-by-side -side just um, to kind of show them what that looks like in terms of the fold. And keep in mind, this just has one seat on it, and this has both. So kind of comparable in size overall. Mm -hmm. um, the Austin looks maybe just a tiny bit taller. Uh, the the upper baby looks a little wider. Yeah, and um, mind that you still need to find a spot. And you got to find a spot though. for your second seat. Okay, so here's Claire, and she's just going to fold the entourage and put it into the trunk. We thought it'd be good to just show you guys what that process looks like when you're actually, like, you know, out in action. Okay, so there she's folded it, and then she just kind of scooches it up to the back of the trunk like that, yeah. And from there, then, she locks those front swivels and then just rolls it up into the back of the trunk. Okay, we also wanted to talk about the bassinet options for the Oslin and the Vista because they are different. Um, this is where we think that, you know, there's some benefits and drawbacks of each one, right? So, you know, for the Vista, the bassinet only fits in the upper um, frame, you know, it won't fit in the lower frame. But what this means is that you can only have your smallest child um, on the stroller with you. So if you have a bigger or taller kid, um, there really isn't an option for them at all uh, if you're going to use the bassinet. The, the other thing that we saw is that, you know, you can't, this seat has to be basically inside of the storage basket. You can't use the canopy either. On yeah, you can't seat. really use the canopy. Um, they're really, I mean, their head is very, very close to um, the back of this bassinet. You would definitely have to put this child in first before putting the, and then take the basket oh, off. Oh, yeah, 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 and then put it on. Yeah. Um, and then we did try it, you know, in this configuration, but um, no bueno, you, you know, you just can't even click it in um, because this is like in the way. So your only option uh, with this is to have a kid that's small and that it, you're gonna put them inside the storage basket to use the bassinet with it. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to put them in a car seat or, um, you know, put them in that seat. Mm -hmm. I do like one. that bassinet. It is a nice... Yeah, it's bassinet. pretty. You know, yeah. it definitely is pretty. And, um, you know, you can... I, I know they make a stand for it, too. Um, it is a pretty short-lived period of life, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but it is... It definitely is nice, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, you know, a separate piece. So... Right. You know, they say, like, if you're going out for, like, a really long outing, you know, you generally shouldn't have your kid in a car seat for a really long period of time, right? That means you have to kind of lug around this separate piece with you. Um, and again, then, you can only have a pretty small kid um, go with you. Or if you're, you know, if you've got a, a three- or four-year-old, that's just not really going to work. Um, okay, so, um, with the entourage, what we did, you know, because we're practical <laughs> about these kinds of things is we actually integrated a built-in bassinet feature into the front seat and so it just comes out of the storage pocket and it fastens here and here and then this area creates a bassinet from the front seat itself um, it's got a really nice canopy then I mean it, it's full coverage uh, over the bassinet area and you've got two areas of ventilation one here and one there um, what this means is that then you can still have either your smaller child parent facing like that, or if they get a little bit bigger, you can put the, the, this child in the bassinet and put that child on the sit and stand. So it just, you know, I would say the pros uh, for upper baby and, and strollers to like that is that you can have the bassinet closer to you and parent facing. Mm -hmm. um, the trade offs is that, you know, particularly with this option, your child has to kind of fit inside of the, the storage basket to even be able to sit in the stroller with the bassinet on there. Uh, lots of conflicts. Um, and, and, you know, a separate piece. It's a whole yeah. separate piece. And then you don't have an option for a bigger kid. Right. So, you know, this is where, like, we, we love bassinets, you know, because mm -hmm. they're cute. But, um, but we feel like this is, like, a doable option, yeah. right? 
um, for this short period of time when your baby actually fits in a bassinet. Um, so there you go. Okay, just a little bit about car seat adapters, um, just in case you guys have questions about that. So, you know, the typical double strollers have a place to put a car seat, you know, on the uh, top of the frame and on the lower portion of the frame. Um, Auslan is similar insofar as, you know, you can place the car seat here with adapters. You can also expand it and place the car seat up here, parent facing. This is what a lot of our parents do, you know, when they have their um, second child, you know, they have their baby up high and really close to them. They've got all the storage underneath that they can access. And then they put their bigger kid in the front. Or you can always, you know, put the car seat here and put them on the sit and stand in the back. All right, so thank you all so much for uh, taking the time to watch this video. You know, we just really wanted to provide you with more information. You know, we want you to be 100% confident that when you get an entourage, that that is exactly what you wanted and what meets your family's needs. And we hope that by kind of reviewing, comparing, contrasting the differences between the two, you can make the right decision for your family. So thanks again.